Good morning, everyone. We're happy to have you here on this Cisco Meraki webinar hosted with the uh, County of Newcastle in Delaware. So we have a couple folks here with us on the line who are going to be talking us through their deployment. I'm really excited for you guys to get a feel for the impact that Cisco Meraki has made um, in Newcastle and the potential impact we could have um, at your city, county, library, you know, school, et cetera. So I'm looking forward to doing that. So for today, we'll talk through our agenda here. So we'll do a brief introduction on Cisco Meraki. We'll talk about, you know, why transition to the cloud, why cloud-managed IT. Um, obviously, we'll talk through the case study here with Newcastle. So we have Mike and John joining us who will be talking through their decision-making process, how they ended up uh, going with Meraki, and obviously how we've impacted, you know, their day-to-day -day, um, since they deployed Meraki over, you know, 70-plus sites. Um, following that, we'll go through a live demo. I'll give you guys a high-level overview of our wireless access points, our cloud-managed switches, as well as our um, MX security appliance. So we'll talk through SD-WAN, as well as, you know, client features, Layer 7 application visibility that you'll be getting, um, as well as some of the highlights that Newcastle had with uh, their deployment. So uh, following that, we'll talk through the Meraki solution, what we offer. So we'll talk about what Newcastle deployed, as well as uh, what we su would suggest for other folks, kind of similarly sized, or, you know, even if you are a smaller uh, state and local entity, we can definitely help you out there. And following that, we'll talk about next steps. So obviously, we know a lot of you here are excited to potentially get a free access point. We'll talk through those eligibility requirements um, and how to follow up with us on that. Great. So as I mentioned, for those of you who are attending who are eligible, you will be getting an MR33 with a three-year cloud management license. So in order to receive that AP, you must be an IT professional, not a partner, reseller, or consultant. You've registered with your company email address. So let's say, you know, mike at newcastlecounty.com. Um, and then you're going to just confirm your shipping address with your Meraki rep. So you, for, the, for the full eligibility details, go ahead and check out meraki.cisco.com forward slash AP. So when claiming your free device, obviously we want you to review the eligibility requirements online, connect with your Meraki rep. Um, myself and Carly um, will be able to help you out with that, and we'll also have you confirm your shipping address to make sure that MR33 finds its way to you um, in one piece. Um, and before I forget, obviously I forgot to give myself an intro here. My name is Amani Terminini. I actually cover Central and South New Jersey. Uh, Newcastle joins us from Delaware. They're actually um, a client of my field counterpart, Matthew Shaner. So happy to be joining them today. I've done a few webinars here for us in the K-12 through space as well as the state and local space. So happy to talk through these solutions. And obviously anyone here on the Meraki side would be more than happy to engage with anyone who is considering Meraki for deployment. All right, so uh, quickly we'll just give you guys uh, a brief overview about Cisco Meraki. So I've been with Meraki for just about three years. I joined when we had about 600,000 active networks worldwide. Now we're looking at you know upwards of 1.5 million, right? Um, we were actually founded in 2006 by a few MIT students who started something called the RoofNet Project where they wanted to expand the wireless coverage from campus to the um, outer boroughs, right? Um, essentially, this project picked up. These guys had created this cloud-managed dashboard that really generated a lot of interest. They found themselves here in San Francisco, um, and we were acquired by Cisco in 2012. So since then, we've grown to be Cisco's fastest-growing acquisition. Um, we're on track to be about a $2 billion run rate business this year, and obviously we're trusted by really um, large folks out there. So we have names such as Harvard, GCU, Newcastle County, you know, the city of New Haven was one of my customers in uh, Connecticut. But we have a lot of large folks, you know, Desjardins Bank, um, U-Haul most recently, but a lot of people who trust um, the Cisco Meraki name, and obviously we're under that. Cisco umbrella, so you do have the support and the backing of a worldwide enterprise um, grade company with kind of a new and improved, you know, cloud feel with Meraki. So um, obviously the beauty of Meraki is that dashboard, right? So we started out with our flagship wireless APs, then we expanded into 
switching lines, MX security appliances, um, endpoint management, which is our systems manager um, product, as well as security cameras and um, application analytics, which we recently um, deployed. So basically the point of having a Meraki network from end to end is that your hardware, software, and your cloud services are all going to be integrated, right? So take a historically, um, you know, on-prem kind of clunky equipment that you have, you know, controller-based environment where you have to command line in to make um, configuration changes. You can actually do that through the cloud with a couple clicks of a button. And we'll talk through the highlights of what that means for you when you have Meraki APs, Meraki switches, Meraki firewalls, you know, distributed across several sites or, you know, 50 plus sites. Um, it really is beautiful to have everything in a single pane of glass. And as I mentioned, we are among Cisco's fastest growing acquisitions. So I think the one that actually beats us is the one we initially um, acquired uh, back in the day for switches. So um, Meraki is kind of the fastest growing segment of Cisco, and that's because a lot of folks are moving to the cloud and looking to be able to target their issues and troubleshoot any problems they may have uh, more quickly and more easily. So that browser-based dashboard is going to give you that ability. So over 250,000 unique customers, over 3.5 million Meraki devices, you know, worldwide. Um, and I'm actually here with Carly in San Francisco. This is where our headquarters is. So we always joke about bringing um, Cisco back to San Francisco. Um, but we also do have a location in Chicago, London, as well as Sydney. So that's going to be really important when you guys think about investing in a company that's going to be able to be there for you 24 by 7. We have support reps in each and every one of those locations. So at any point, if you were to dial in, you should be waiting no longer than two minutes on the phone with them to f kind of find a resolution. All right, so we'll talk through a little bit of the out-of-band cloud management, right? So a lot of people come to us with the question, you know, can we trust the cloud? Um, the question is, yes, absolutely with Meraki. Um, in this instance, it's highly scalable, intuitive, it's reliable, and we do provide you with the 99.99 .99 uptime SLA. And you'll know, um, and you'll be happy to know, that no user traffic actually passes through the Meraki cloud. So. We're fully HIPAA and PCI compliant. Um, we do perform third-party audits and daily penetration testing. Um, and those automatic firmware and security updates that you're able to schedule or automate on your own, those will kind of ensure that your dashboard is on the most recent firmware level, that you guys are going to be protected, and that you don't have to worry about a security threat. Um, Meraki is going to be kind of working for you while you have it running and while you have everything um, deployed. All right, so why Meraki for state and local? So something that we really want to highlight is better connectivity, right? So people have the expectation now that when they go to a public place, if you're at Disneyland or you're at the mall, et cetera, you want to have um, the ability to connect to the Internet, right? So we have the ability to support high density and branch locations with, you know, built-in location analytics and WAN performance monitoring. Basically what that means is that we're going to ensure that each and every individual at, you know, your remote sites or your sites with about 20 individuals, they're all going to have equal access to that Internet, and they're never going to have issues with connectivity. Um, furthermore, security and uptime are really important to us, right? We're going to protect that visitor data. You're going to allow them to security co securely connect via, you know, a splash page or a pre-shared key. But what you're going to make sure to do is that you improve public safety, that folks can't just hop on your administrative network um, willy-nilly, right? Also being able to allow guest access to those folks and throttle down the kind of bandwidth consumption that they can perform while connected to your network. Of course, something that we'll harp on here at Meraki is that ease of deployment, ease of management. So hypothetically speaking, you buy, you know, 10 Meraki APs. While they're being shipped to you, you can actually pre-configure those devices that way, when they arrive on site, they're basically plug and play. You guys power those up, and those APs should be, you know, modeling those configurations that you've set to them. So you can use that zero-touch deployment to configure all products before they arrive. Um, this is especially important when you are, you know, outfitting or rewiring um, several locations, as the folks at Newcastle did. Um, they were able to deploy, you know, over 70 sites um, in just under a year, if I'm not mistaken. 
So obviously remote management is simplified because you're able to view everything in that single pane of glass and identify any issues, you know, in one single page, right? Is there any network that's alerting? Are there any folks having trouble? Um, are there connectivity issues related to an issue upstream? You're going to be able to identify those um, very quickly and very easily. Um, and lastly, time efficiency. So we want to give you back time to, to do the things that you need to do, right? Not to command line into something, not to spend hours and hours trying to figure out what the issue is with something. You're going to be able to drill down and find the root cause of any of your problems, as well as make any adjustments to your network um, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, when need be. So that GUI um, interface, that dashboard, that's going to be able to um, assist you in kind of freeing up your time to do things that maybe you guys really have a need for now, but you're not able to do because you're spending a lot of time, you know, troubleshooting or managing the network. So I believe I mentioned this before, we are trusted by thousands of customers, right? I can think about in New Jersey, you know, Cape May County Library, a couple, you know, hundred and thousands of, you know, K through 12s, um, Hunterdon in County also uses Meraki, right? So you can take a look at all these folks here, Douglas County Libraries, um, King George in Virginia, all of these folks use Meraki and are extremely happy with their deployments. Um, and the point is, we want to give you guys more time back. We want to give you the ability to really, um, you know, get to the root of issues and, and spend some time, you know, developing yourselves as well and not having to worry about, is my network up and running? How do I get to the issues, you know, that need to be addressed, right? And, and that way you're going to be a happier employee and, you know, everyone on your network is going to be a happier user. So um, for this portion of the webinar, we will be having Mike and John um, introducing themselves and talking to their transition to the cloud uh, in Newcastle. So we'll have Mike, who's the Chief of Technology and Administrative Services, as well as John, who is the Manager of Information Systems for Newcastle County. So guys, we're happy to have you here. Um, go ahead and uh, take it away. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, sorry for that connection issues. My name is Mike Honicki. I'm the Chief of Technology for Newcastle County Government here in Delaware. We're the largest county in Delaware. We service over 550,000 residents, and we have about 1,900 government employees. The interesting thing about my organization is I have a small, limited IT staff you know, who are responsible for providing services for all our branches of government, public safety, public works, community services, and administration. When we came in as office with the new administration a little over two years ago, we assumed a infrastructure that was outdated, uh, that was challenges, and the challenges were that the previous administration did not provide the support to the IT shop, and we knew we had to quickly figure out a plan. The county executive charged me with the challenge of updating our infrastructure to the 21st century to get the services to enable government to better serve the citizens in Newcastle. So what we did and why we selected Meraki, my team went off. I tasked them with doing research. They looked across our current infrastructure. They looked at the, the solutions in the market. And they came back with the unanimous decision to go with the Meraki. Why? Because of the quick deployment. We knew we had to act fast. And we had 38 locations that had to be brought up. And that also included wiring. So as we're rewiring the infrastructure, they needed the, the hardware to go in place very quickly. The training. I looked at what my team had done over the years in working to support our aged infrastructure. We had to bring in specialized people. With the Meraki platform, it simplified our ability to get up and running in a, in a short period of time with a very limited staff. I'm going to turn the mic over to my head of my infrastructure, John Yearly, and he'll talk through the next series of slides and points. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, name is John Yearly, um, Information Systems Manager here overseeing the um, network infrastructure. Um, I will say one of the things that um, Mike had mentioned before, um, he tasked us with the with the idea that we had to go out, we had to act quickly, but we had to get the best possible solution. Um, we reviewed a lot of vendors, um, a lot of big name vendors, and uh, the comfort level 
fell in the area of um, actually a couple quick things. Not only was the deployment that uh, Mike had mentioned, um, as we had 38 facilities uh, that we had to install and maintain, uh, so we needed we needed to have complete visibility of those uh, areas. Um, the lack of uh, extensive training that you need. Um, these are really uh, a plug and play type of uh, solution, not only for the access layer switches, the wireless, but we also have security devices in the MX uh, series, the MX65 to be exact. So coupling all that, we had to have complete visibility of not only our main campus networks, but our remote locations as well. And given the fact that what I call thin IT in the sense that I only had five resources to complete these tasks and actually oversee and manage those, I needed to have complete coverage with a, with a very little time frame of having to ramp up in terms of training and have a plug and play device that not only plays well but can be secure at the same time. Uh, we found that in Meraki. Um, the, uh, the the management of uh, of the product itself it simplifies the day to day operations in the sense that a lot of their resources they need to maintain three or four hats in in overseeing many of our uh, other disciplines within IT email uh, storage data servers. Uh, so we need to be able to troubleshoot to have visibility to see. Uh, on the fly and be able to troubleshoot and fix problems on the fly, be able to change bandwidth, be able to have the visibility from the client standpoint. All this played into our realm of our needs and wants, which Meraki fit the picture for. So in taking a look at the next slide, which is it's very interesting because uh, we have the disciplines of many areas, according to, well, for our uh, APs, we have um, our wireless heads in and outside of our uh, facilities, uh, pretty much to, to take care of everyone inside with their day-to-day -day working. But outside, we have many areas where our public works, our public safety, who have vehicles and resources that need to gain network visibility to capture task lists, uh, workloads. Um, so we use those in many remote facilities. We actually have the MR42s for the internal and the MR74 series for our external APs. Um, in that we, I mean, we've increased the device and, and client visibility with, um, we can see bandwidth, we can actually see all of our client devices, what type of applications they are running the type of bandwidth that they are using, or able to control that in the sense that giving them the highest visibility and, and taking care and troubleshooting any types of problems that they have, we can move quickly on that. Um, this has especially helped our, uh, our um, public safety realm in the sense that we have many uh, departments that, that coexist and need uh, visibility up 24-7, we have a huge public safety realm um, that has uh, emergency preparedness. Uh, we have patrol officers, we have EMS, we have fire and uh, 911 centers. And what we need to do is provide the highest visibility and provide on the fly uh, visibility in the sense that if we have an emergency and we need to prepare our, uh, what we call our fusion center, which is our command posts, uh, we have uh, wireless networks that we can bring in outside agencies to contact and collaborate with our on-site um, resources uh, to, to respond to any issue or problem that we have. And the best thing about that is I stand there and I talk about troubleshooting and the visibility of it. We've actually uh, implemented heat maps and internal uh, blueprints of our offices and our locations to pinpoint exactly where our wireless heads are. So we know device count. We know where a device is jumping to from any point in time from any remote location, jumping to another remote location, back to the campus location, it makes us easier for us to see uh, and, and help that person out in, in, if they have any issue. Um, we've also decided at the time to buy the access layer switches. So we have a series of MS-225s uh, and 250 uh, series switches. 
uh, the best thing about that is we've my resources have created templates on uh, building these switches, building as in the configuration. Uh, as as Meraki has stated, it's all cloud configuration. So our configurations are stored at Meraki with simple download, uh, the capability of installing, configuring, and bringing up a switch. It takes it to a, to a point where we've used to, in the past, take about two hours to deploy an access layer switch. It now takes maybe 10 minutes to uh, download <clears throat> the configuration to the switch and move forward, put it into place, and it's plug and play. Um, again, the port visibility on our Meraki's is, is tenfold of what we used to have before. Uh, the vi visibility in, in, in the sense that the client, the applications that are running, we can see who, what, where, when, how, and why. Uh, it gives a certain comfort level in knowing that your shop is, is able to be up 24-7. We can see warnings um, uh, ahead of time and be able to take care of them. Um, one of the largest things I will say in terms of the switches, which was awesome, is the uh, firmware upgrades. One of the major problems we used to have in our old infrastructure was the fact that we had to take those down at, at, at one of our major important sites, which was the public safety. Um, we would be down and take everything out for hours on end uh, in, in a high visibility uh, area, especially including a 911 center. You just can't do that. Um, now with what we have with the Meraki, we can upgrade firmware when we want, how we want, on the fly, and no one knows. Uh, it, it, it takes maybe a, probably a half an hour uh, to do our whole um, environment, whereas before it would take days and days and days to, to go through all of our uh, infrastructure and switches. Uh, one important note I wanted to bring up was, was the fact that uh, we had one situation uh, where we implemented our first uh, stack um, in it, with Meraki. Uh, it was actually a trouble where we had one of our access layer stacks in, in a closet with our old solution. Um, it actually went south. It, it went down. And we decided, okay, you know what, we're going to jump before we deploy everything. And we used a Meraki stack. We had that thing up and running in probably a half an hour, as opposed to rebuilding the old infrastructure stack, which would have taken three, three and a half hours easily, as I've done those myself. And they aren't pretty. So the comfort level uh, with, with having Meraki has been nothing short of, of not only a success, but a joy to have. Um, and moving on uh, to our MX uh, security appliances, we decided to buy the MX series appliances as well, only because we we had uh, resources. Like I said, with our limited resources, what we wanted to do was tie in all our remote locations, so we had one visibility, one pane of glass that oversees everything. That was one of our wish list items. Um, thankfully, with the MX series. Um, uh, devices, the MX65 to be exact, we deployed them as the VPN between all our remote locations and our major campus locations. So they collected back um, with failover to um, the MX400s. Um, so if one fails, the other one, it just flops over to the other one. So we have constant visibility of all our remote locations without ever having to leave our chair. Um, fortunately, with these MX, they also act as a, as a firewall. So uh, the content filtering is a joy to have as it's an extra layer of protection uh, before they hit our main ISP firewalls. So we have double protection in that. Uh, one of the pleasant things to see is the uh, snort, um, the intrusion uh, prevention uh, safeguards that are in these devices. Um, love them. It, it, it's almost as if it feels as, as it's the comfort level of maybe impossibly having to remove any kind of antibot, antivirus software on the PC because we can narrow it down to a port level. What I'd love to have is to have that on the MS switches, but uh, that's a future request that is another joy to have with Meraki. Um, if you have any kind of request for upgrades or, or development work to put in, you put in a claim and, and they will usually get back to you with what they are working on and keep you uh, abreast of everything that is coming up uh, fresh and new with Meraki. So um, 
again, uh, you could roll through a whole bunch, but I will uh, will let Mike roll on with how we've uh, introduced this to Newcastle County. With the government being in here in Delaware being small and needing to maximize our resources, we needed a network that was efficient. We need the challenge from the county executive was to enable collaboration across our agencies and to make sure we can improve productivity and efficiencies. We couldn't do that if we didn't have a network that we could trust. You know, we want to use data. You know, today, data tells a story, information builds trust, and we needed a network that could give us that access to the real data at the, at the real-time efforts so we can make timely decisions. We want to spend more time deploying new cloud solutions. Our network couldn't handle it. If we did not go down this path, with the solutions we selected and the architecture that we designed, we could not enable going to Office 3, you know, on other cloud solutions. I want to plug any of vendors, sorry, but other solutions that are cloud dependent. We, my team is spending less time troubleshooting day-to-day -day maintenance because now I, they can do more things. They have more time to be innovative. They have more time to look at how can we do things better because they're not putting out fires from the past. From the citizen's perspective, you know, it allowed us to provide internet access, equal internet access across our public locations, our ci senior citizen locations, allowing them to connect, gain access to online classes. They can participate in training. They can ap apply for jobs. You know, we're able to provide improved public safety, as John mentioned, having hotspots key located around the county. It gives our officers a reliable hotspot to go to, to connect to the county resources, to do their job or download the information they need in the field. And really, you know, looking at the benefits of the network now with the reliable Wi-Fi, we can build community programs that can be offered in multiple locations where previously we were limited to the geographic areas with only limited number of Wi-Fi heads. And now John's team can adjust the bandwidth according based on the demand from the different programs. So we're excited that, you know, it's in, I believe that in the world of demand for resources keeps going up and the amount of money and funding going, getting less and less, the efficiencies gained through intelligent and smart technology solutions helps gain back that efficiency. So as a leader, as a CTO, I'm very comfortable now and pleased that we're up and running and can now move, move the county forward. Thank you. So uh, for now, we're going to be we're going to be going through the demos. I want to thank Mike and John. Um, we'll also have you here for questions. Um, so we'll get started. We wanted to highlight the Meraki solutions. Um, so first thing I wanted to go ahead and show you was the Meraki dashboard. So I'm actually walking us through the product page here first and foremost. So as Mike and John mentioned, they deployed um, wireless access points, switches, and firewalls. Um, and an easy way to navigate through the website is just to hop in. So wireless APs, they were um, deploying the MR42 models. These are our 3x3x3 three by three by three dual MIMO um, access points, but these are typically what we suggest for um, you know, general purpose usage. Um, as they mentioned, they're using those MR74s for that outdoor coverage, and that has really made um, a great impact for them on those folks that work in public works and public safety, right, being able to connect to the Internet. Um, they're not having any issues now thanks to those MR74s. So I'm assuming we're using some antennas there, but um, that will allow you to extend out coverage, you know, further than just your buildings, right? Um, another thing I wanted to highlight is obviously we don't have only wireless switches in security, but um, endpoint management, security cameras, as well as an application performance management application that you can actually view through the dashboard as well. So for today's demo, I'll actually be demoing our Meraki London location um, in Finsbury. For those of you who've been to London, um, it's a very beautiful area, really nice office here. Um, as you can see, we have our Meraki HQ over here in San Francisco, as well as that location in Chicago, and we do have the folks over in Sydney. So for today, we're going to hop into Meraki London, but this is just a good way for you to take a look at, all right, we have 56 networks, you know, live worldwide. These are around the world, Meraki, you know, 
folks who are remote users and those who are in Sydney as well as Tokyo. We're opening up a location in Shanghai as well, but we want to make sure these folks are VPNing into our um, our hub here in San Francisco and that we're able to kind of monitor the traffic the same way we would here at HQ around the world. So we'll get started by taking a look at the network-wide clients page. So this is where uh, Mike and John had mentioned the ability to get a really granular look at which, app which applications are being used on your network. So I'll actually throttle this down for only access point clients here in Meraki, London. And um, we'll take a look at for the last day. So over the last day, we have about 365 client devices that have connected. You can take a look at the traffic here as well as the layer 7 application visibility. So one thing I always like to do is kind of pick on someone who's using something that's not mission critical, right? So you can see that the folks in Meraki have been pretty good with the exception of, let's say, the Netflix here that's cracking into the top 20 usage. Um, we can actually drill down into that specific application and get really granular as to, you know, which client device, which user is contributing the most to this role. Now, before I do that, I wanted to highlight that everything here on the dashboard is very intuitive and easy, easy to use. So what we're looking at here is the overall client devices, right? If we wanted to actually throttle down based on iPad, we're going to throttle this down to now 14 devices. Um, kind of conversely, if you wanted to add or deselect columns here, um, this is entirely customizable for you, right? The point is this dashboard is meant to work for you. It's going to be aggregating data. It's going to be intelligent. And um, the point is that we make your life a little bit easier by being able to take a look at this one single interface for everything you need. And as Mike and John had mentioned, uh, this make a wish button down here, this is where a lot of folks have made feature requests. So these go straight to our engineering team. They're kind of queued up, they're addressed. Um, and as they mentioned, we'll keep you abreast as to um, the progress we've made on those things. So a little bit later, I'll show you guys the network-wide topology feature. That was actually something that a lot of people had requested that we pushed out in dashboards. So again, with that one-to-one -one licensing model, you know, one MR42, one five-year license, you guys are going to have that 24 by 7 support I mentioned, the automatic firmware updates, as well as connectivity here to the Meraki dashboard. So kind of carrying on to my example earlier, we'll go ahead and go through the applications, right? So we'll pick on someone here at Meraki, London, you know, who's been using quite a bit of Netflix. So it looks like um, Dobby's uh, is contributing to 97% of uh, the bandwidth consumption here. So how can we take an individual who is maybe not utilizing the network as, you know, effectively or as appropriately as we'd like and maybe throttling down their usage, right? So we can actually drill down into their specific client device. We can figure out when they were last connected, which SSID they were connected to, which access point they were connected to, which I will move into shortly. But basically, we're getting a lot of information with a couple clicks of a button. And as you can see, this individual on their MacBook has been using their device primarily for Netflix. So in this instance, I, as the IT director, would go ahead and, you know, block them and say CIT or go ahead and put them on a group policy where we, you know, mark them as a bandwidth abuser, right? Kind of conversely, let's say this is an individual who you want to have no bandwidth limitations or splash pages, et cetera. You could go ahead and whitelist them here, click save, and then we would um, push out those um, restrictions or you know, in this case of whitelisting, no restrictions uh, to that specific device and that client. And if you notice here on the top right side, we're taking a look at the actual maps and floor plans. Now, this is due to the fact that Google was one of our first investors and customers uh, over 10 years ago. They bought a handful of um, access points, and we have this exclusive Google Maps integration. So essentially, you guys can upload your maps and floor plans place the APs where they are kind of in real time and get an idea of, you know, this client is connecting to this access point, so on and so forth. So we'll take this kind of in another direction with the APs. Let's say we wanted to see if this individual was having issues upstream, right? They reached out, they gave you a support ticket and said, hey, I'm having trouble connecting to the network. What do we do? So in that case, we would actually drill down into the Meraki access point they're connected to. 
So it looks like um, Dabby's MacBook Pro was connected to an MR52. So this AP is one that's a little bit more robust, used for higher density deployments. Um, a lot of the schools I work with, we use these in cafeterias or auditoriums. You know, for state and local government, you guys would use these in large meeting rooms or places where a town hall may occur. Um, but this is just so you have a lot of folks on the network not having issues connecting because you're using a 4x4x4 four by four by four access point now. So once we click into this MR52, we're going to get quite a bit of information. Again, we have the location here with Google Maps. We have the SSIDs that are being broadcast. Um, and if you notice here on the left side, we're seeing the actual closet and port that are connecting these switches now, or this access point. Something to consider is that if you do not have Meraki switches upstream, you're not going to get the same visibility, and that's something I'll highlight in a moment. Um, firmware levels, we can take a look at which one is at. If we wanted to move up a firmware level and you know push out an update, we could do that. Um, you'd go ahead and go to um, organization, and you would click firmware upgrades, go ahead and schedule that. Um, but in this case, I actually wanted to take you guys through the live tools. So let's say we actually wanted to troubleshoot this access point. We could go ahead and ping the AP or blink the LEDs if we wanted someone to manually reboot it. Um, and we can also take a look at any wireless troubleshooting. So let's say that individual was connected at this time. It looks like it's 22 clients when there is an auto RF channel change. Um, perhaps we can kind of drill down a little bit further and figure out why they were experiencing issues. Um, and it's important to note we can throttle back and forth based on the 2.4 gigahertz radio as well as that 5 gigahertz radio. And um, Mike and John, do you guys have anything to add here as far as, you know, the use case for you guys uh, with the APs? You covered most of it. The one thing I can say from the management or senior level, it helps me to say with management we have the right coverage in the right conference rooms, public areas. You know, with John stating we overlaid our building floor plans with our IP network, we can dial in the signal to make sure we're putting the signal or we're broadcasting the right SSID where we want it for the right purpose because we have some unique areas that have dedicated SSIDs for certain clients. And the flexibility within the, the wireless network allows us to easily create those specialized SSIDs. All right. Thank you. So moving on, we're going to just go ahead and um, highlight a couple more things on the wireless before I hop into the switches. But one thing to consider is, you know, let's say this individual is still having connectivity issues. You want to move further upstream and figure out, is this actually an issue coming from the switch level? So we can actually drill down into port 11, which was powering that MR52. So as you can see, we're kind of weaving through the dashboard, moving upstream, as I like to call it. Um, and this is something that is very unique to Meraki, right? This GUI interface, the dashboard, the ability to aggregate all that data, that is all the intelligence and the kind of the robustness of the Meraki dashboard kind of at play. So as you can see, we've hopped into closet 8.1.1 where we're looking at an MS35048 full power switch. So this switch is a very robust layer three switch here that that access point is connected to. And similarly to the access points, you're going to get a lot of insight here, right? The serial number of the device, the actual core switch it's connected to, if any updates are available. Um, if you guys recall, I mentioned the topology page, which I'll show you in just a moment. Um, but as you can see, each and every page you click with the dashboard is just going to give you a plethora of information, right? So we're looking at port 11. This one is connected. It's PoE enabled. We can also see the port traffic. We can change the config if we'd like to, check connectivity, et cetera. Um, and one thing we can also do is enable or disable layer three routing. We can see the location here, any changes in the event. So port status changes, port bounces, cable tests, et cetera. We can actually see a full event log if necessary. And obviously those live tools that we love so much. So run a cable test, cycle a port, et cetera. Obviously, for today's purposes, um, I'm actually on a Meraki Lend network. I won't be performing any of those tools, but um, I would highly suggest that any of you who are interested in getting your hands on Meraki equipment, reach out to your Meraki reps. So the folks in the K-12 through space, state and local space, you know, higher ed space, we love, um, you know, impacting customers who are kind of dealing with day-to-day -day citizens, right? We're all 
citizens of a city. I'm here in San Francisco, right? I would love to have, you know, free Wi-Fi, et cetera, and make sure that public safety was, you know, top of mind. So that's something that will definitely help you to push this um, to your upper management, to the folks who are making decisions here. So if you guys are interested, we'll talk through um, demo options, but risk-free risk -free, uh, trials, we can definitely get those in your hands as well, and that way you can kind of get a little bit more acclimated with the dashboard. All right, and I did want to highlight the Meraki topology page. So this one's actually showing us our network-wide layer 3 topology out there in London. So as you can see, we're looking at our network from end to end. So Meraki London actually has two MX400s, kind of similar to, similarly to uh, the folks over at Newcastle. We have one and a warm spare there for redundancy, right? We can see our core switch. We can see various switch stacks, right? But the most important thing to note here is that you can actually download and print this, or let's say, you know, you actually got an alert that one of these devices was alerting or one of them was offline. You can very easily pivot into the actual device that you want to troubleshoot. So let's say someone was having an issue here. Maybe we can move upstream and figure out, all right, are there a lot of clients on this? What's going on? How can we help? So actually drilling down into the specific information here. And I will highlight anything that's over here in blue. So in order for your switches and your network to kind of be mapped out and aggregated here, they do need to be Meraki devices, right? But let's say you have a Cisco switch kind of here and there. Uh, we will get LLDP and um, information for that switch. You just won't be able to actually drill down into it and you know do any remote troubleshooting or config changes. Alrighty, so a couple things I wanted to highlight on the wireless side before um, we touch on security and SD-WAN. Um, I wanted to actually highlight something called Air Marshal. So each one of our Meraki access points is um, equipped with a dedicated security radio, right? You can choose to have all of your AP scanning. Um, if they identify, you know, any SSIDs that we've identified to be malicious, we can go ahead and blacklist those. If we wanted to be alerted when any rogue or, you know, random SSIDs are showing, showing up on our network, we can actually send you an email alert. Um, and you can actually see any rogue SSIDs or SSIDs have been, you know, detected on your network. Looks like Rocky London hasn't had too many issues with this. Um, of course, we want to talk about firewall and traffic shaping from the AP level. So let's say we were to look at our Meraki corporate network here. We can choose which layer 3 firewall rules to enable, which layer 7 firewall rules we want to enable. So let's just say, you know, at your main building, Facebook is a huge issue. Just go ahead and click Facebook.com. We're going to just go ahead and deny that HTTP host name. Um, and you can add and remove based on, you know, your preferences or if needs arise, you can go ahead and throttle based on that. Um, and of course, something that we always suggest is, you know, a per client, per client bandwidth limit. So we can actually throttle this down and choose to shape traffic. Um, and if we do that, we can also ensure that they're not hopping from, you know, one SSID to the next, you know, utilizing Netflix or utilizing something that is non-mission critical. On the switch side, I wanted to highlight a couple things as far as the switch ports are concerned. So um, as you recall, Mike and John mentioned that they created templates that they kind of had cloned and it made that really easy for them to deploy um, all of these switches, right? So something that you can do with just a couple clicks of a button is edit switch ports, right? So we can actually choose to enable or disable these switch ports, you know, put them on a port schedule if we only want them running for a certain amount of time. We can go ahead and isolate ports if necessary or add tags, right? Well, you can update that with a couple clicks of a button. Um, and obviously, you can adjust this to your liking. If you guys would like to include, you know, isolation or tags, you can also include that here. Move these around based on, you know, what's important to you. But basically, we're seeing all the switch ports here in Meraki, London over, you know, a thousand here, and we're able to select a couple and make changes, you know, very quickly and very easily. Um, anything to add on that, Mike, John? No, um, you're, you're spot on with everything. Good to know. All right. Well, perfect. So the last thing I wanted to highlight was security. So 
the folks over at Newcastle are using Meraki MX65s. So um, they mm -hmm. do have those enabled with advanced security, and that means that it comes included with uh, content filtering, traffic shaping, um, and this is from an enterprise level, mm -hmm. right? So we talked about that kind of um, snort ability that we have with the IDS and the IPS. Um, mm -hmm. The Meraki MX provides Cisco's best-in-class intrusion prevention to prevent your network from any malicious attacks, right? So we have that Cisco Talus team working constantly every day to identify threats, and those threats are actually blocked across each and every Cisco network, right? So if one of our customers impacted, we're going to make sure that no one else is impacted. Um, something else to highlight is SD-WAN, right? For the folks over at Newcastle, it was really important that we connected um, the smaller remote sites with the large, you know, main site, right? So we had mm -hmm. that MX400 there. We had a hub and spoke kind of model there with the MX65s, but this ensured that, you know, we're able to monitor the traffic for the folks that are VPNing into mm -hmm. the network and make sure that, you know, they're also getting that added layer of protection and kind of um, the ability to, you know, make sure that they're not forgotten even though they're kind of remote workers. Um, so something I wanted to highlight here was SD-WAN, right? We've been hearing this phrase a lot. It's really big kind of in the tech industry right now, and especially at Cisco and Cisco Meraki. Um, but essentially, that just means that our remote sites are now going to be able to be connected over Internet links, and we're going to secure those by VPN, right? So mm -hmm. this will basically enable IT admins to maximize network resiliency and bandwidth efficiency. So the same kind of... Um, stipulations that you put on the folks at HQ, the remote workers will also have that, right? Um, and that'll ensure that you're having optimal performance for mission critical applications, and we can avoid disruptions um, of highly, you know, performance sensitive traffic, such as voice over IP, right? We want to make sure that if someone is having an issue or a public safety worker is, is experiencing a problem or has to report an issue, that they don't have trouble doing so on the network. So what we're looking at here is the Meraki uh, London MX400, right? So it's here at Finsbury. We do have that warm spare that is passive and ready here. We also have the firmware. The configurations are up to date. But we can take a look at this historical data for the last two days or last two hours, excuse me, as well as the last week. If we wanted any information on uplink configuration, we have that all here, any uplink traffic as well. Um, so let's say you want to take a look at any latency or loss that you may have experienced over the last week, we can do that here and see it on WAN 1 as well as WAN 2. If we wanted to take a look at DHCP subnets, we also have the option to do so here. Obviously the location of the device, that MX400 here in London as well as the live tools. So we want to be able to blink the LEDs, run a trace route test, et cetera. Of course, um, as I mentioned, I'm actually demoing this network live, so don't want to run any tests and, and throw something off here. But um, was just important to show you guys uh, the fact that this outlook looks a lot like um, the other ones you see with the APs and the switches. Mm -hmm. um, something else I wanted to highlight was the site-to-site -site VPN. So we have easily the most um, quick and advanced VPN setup with just a couple clicks, right? So you can choose to utilize a hub and spoke model here. You can add exit hubs if necessary, but you can actually adjust your VPN settings based on your, you know, your local network as well as any NAT traversal you wanted or any remote VPN participants. You want to make sure that folks, you know, here in San Jose as well as Chicago are also able to get onto the network and and perform their duties and do their job. So um, with a couple clicks of a button, you guys are able to do that here and make adjustments. Um, Mike, John, did you guys want to highlight anything that you like particularly about uh, the VPN, the site-to-site -site VPN? Uh, it, it, it's, it was smooth. Um, I wish I could, wish I would go off more, but uh, it was very easy to, to implement. Um, Again, uh, the ability to also act as a firewall um, uh, with with the snore capabilities it was amazing. It, it has helped us tremendously. Um, 
again, it, the deployment of this has been nothing less than an absolute success and a, and a joy to see the, the team able to deploy these. Uh, we also use the channel partner as well with our implementation, with our purchase and implementation, um, I should say, but uh, working together as a team, um, we took we took what really uh, could have, could have taken uh, multiple years uh, down to months. Um, so uh, the knowledge transfer from our uh, from our uh, channel partner with us has also helped tremendously, where we don't have to have a dedicated uh, resources that are uh, that are trained uh, tr for for many many years. Um, Again, we, we, the, the training involved is, is minimal, so uh, you know it, it, we can do more with less with this. Mm -hmm. No, it's wonderful to hear that. So we're actually kind of running short on time. A couple things that I did want to mention to folks is that uh, the traffic shaping, threat protection, content filtering, et cetera, those are features of the advanced security license. Um, obviously, after this phone call, if you guys have any interest in Meraki, um, we will be including the Find Your Meraki Rep tool, so you'll be able to do that quickly and easily here. Um, but for, for now, I think the last thing I wanted to show was the Security Center feature. So this is just going to give us a very um, you know, high-level overview of the events that have happened over the last month, any clients that may have been connected, where the threats have come from, so on and so forth. So you can actually download these or you know, schedule an email report you know, on a daily basis. But this is something that you can report back and say, hey, since we've implemented Meraki, we've been able to identify you know, X amount of threats, right? Or we've been able to avoid them altogether. So I'll go ahead and hop back into the slide deck here for our last few minutes. Um, obviously, I talked through the Meraki solutions that um, flagship wireless AP, the security appliances, which is endpoint management, et cetera. Um, the point is here, if you have any interest at all, I would highly suggest that you guys get in touch with your Meraki rep, get in touch with your channel partner of choice, um, and just get the conversation started, right? We're more than happy to hop on a demo with you, get you some trial equipment. Um, you know, no fingers, or no fingers attached. <laughs> no kind of commitment necessary, right? The point is you want to get your hands on this equipment get adapted, get acclimated to that GUI interface, and, and get a better idea if Meraki is a good solution for you. So we do have folks like Mike and John Apple who have had an amazing experience with Meraki. Um, I guarantee you're going to find more people out there who are very happy and who have you know, felt a real impact in, in their day-to-day -day with Meraki. So our next steps are going to be for you to you know, either reach out to Meraki rep, obviously follow up if you are anticipating getting that MR33, I would highly suggest that you do so. And obviously check out our blog. So we do have some exciting announcements kind of on the horizon, things I wish I could mention here. But um, I have to say, you know, in the three years I've been here at Meraki, we are just continuing to kind of improve. And I was in awe this past week or two um, at our sales kickoff about uh, what's to come. So. Definitely as a Meraki customer, you're going to be kind of on the up and up and, and going to be the trendsetter in this industry. So I would highly suggest that if you have any interest at all, that you reach out. Um, so I wanted to say thank you, Mike and John. Uh, we do have a couple questions here. So I'll go ahead and direct these towards you guys. We have a couple minutes. So um, we'll take a look at this first one here. So are you providing free Wi-Fi in your park, so outside and in the recreation center? What sort of range are you getting out of your outdoor APs, and what antennas are you using with those MR74s? Um, good question. Right now with Wi-Fi in the parks, we, we are um, actually uh, looking into that. Um, that is another phase of implementation, um, but it is down the, down the line. Um, as you know, we, we have to look at canopies. We have to look at other, um, you know, goals down the line. It, it's we we are not at that point yet, though. Okay. Um, yeah, that's definitely something I oh, would have folks look into a little bit. But obviously, we can have that. Yeah, for our external APs, rather in, in you know, our remote line. locations. Um, and our last question. Was there another question about remote uh, or external APs? All right. 
Uh, no, not a piece. So actually, oh, we're okay. talking about the total cost of ownership. So how did you guys take a look at this, and how did you decide to move forward with Meraki considering the, the licensing costs? Well, the one thing you had to overcome was because it's a where it's a li ongoing licensing cost and and had to change our budgeting approach. So we looked at the traditional let's buy everything with a capital expenditure versus moving to a a cloud platform, which is more an operational expenditure. So we worked with our finance department. We sat down and did the the ROI, the cost benefit analysis, and took a hard look and because of the way the numbers worked out for us, it made absolute sense to go down this path because uh, we have we understand the licensing costs, the ongoing maintenance and operation, but we also learn about the efficiencies gained by leveraging the platform. All right, and the last question we're going to ask here is when you're using the Meraki APs for public safety, um, are you using a MIFI device in your patrol cars or are they Meraki APs only? We are using a, a series of MIFIs and we're moving the cradle point uh, devices in the vehicles and we're working with our cradle point uh, vendor to connect to the APs from the vehicles. Okay, wonderful. So. I wanted to wrap up here and say thank you, Mike and John. It was an absolute pleasure to have you all on here. As for the other participants and the folks who are on today, uh, go ahead and please follow up with us in regards to getting that MR33. But wanted to say thank you all for your time today, and um, we're really excited to see you know Newcastle's deployment. Um, and obviously, thanks, Mike and John, and everyone have a good Wednesday. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you all.